I have talked about possible selection of patients for immunotherapy. So what is the background? The background is that immunotherapy, in particular treatment with so-called immune checkpoint inhibitors, these are drugs which activate the body's own immune system, means the T cells against the tumor cells, so that they can effectively eliminate the tumor cells. And this has become really, this was a dream for decades for immunologists, but this has become since a few years reality for lung cancer patients. So there is approval of such drugs in the second line setting means after failure of chemotherapy. And the response rate in this situation is about 20%. Means 80% of these patients do not respond at all. So they have no benefit from this new therapy. So you treat a lot of patients which have no benefit on the other side. There are about 20%, but you cannot select these before therapy or this is a major challenge. But you can select better and better with measuring the expression of the so-called molecule PDL1. PDL1 is expressed on the tumor cells, and if the tumor cells express PDL1, then there is a higher probability to select the patients so that they have clinical benefit, it means shrinkage of the tumor and also a longer survival. So this has become reality now in the first line setting means since last year in the United States and soon also in Europe, pembrolizumab, this is one of these immune checkpoint inhibitors, is approved also in treatment naive patients, but only in patients who have a very strong expression of this PDL1. And these are about 25% of the patients. But even in these patients, there are PDL1 positive patients who do not respond. And we also have PDL1 negative patients, for instance, in the relapse situation, which are completely negative for PDL1, but nevertheless have a clinical benefit. So this means that there is clearly a need for better, we call it predictive biomarkers, helping us to make immunotherapy more precisely. And uh, I have summarized different strategies to do this besides the PDL1 testing. And one strategy is looking for we call it overall mutational burden. This is a sum of all mutations present in a tumor cell. And uh, what we can see is the higher the mutation burden, the higher is the probability to respond to immune therapy. And now there are different strategies to understand what is the underlying mechanism. So if you have a higher mutation burden, you have a higher burden of so-called neoepitopes. These are targets recognized by the T cell system as non-self and they trigger an immune response. And this could also be shown in the meantime by different groups. The higher the so-called neoepitope burden, the higher the probability of the immune uh, that the patient has a benefit from the immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy. And this is one big strategy. So we are in the beginning of understanding and this is science. So it's much, these analysis today are much too complicated to transfer them into clinical routine. And the second approach is that if we want to understand the interaction between the tumor cell and the T cell, which should eliminate the tumor cell, we cannot focus only on these two cells, but these two, because these two cells are in the context of the so-called tumor micromilieu means they are not alone interacting, but there are a lot of other cells. So the immune system consists of many other cells, natural killer cells and uh, specialized T cells, B cells. Then we have stromal cells, tumor fibroblasts, we have tumor vessel cells, and all these cells interact. And, and we call it the interactions in the tumor micromilieu. And there are now new genomic approaches to understand the complex interaction in the tumor micromilieu. And one of these approaches is a so-called transcriptome analysis. So you measure all the activity of the genes. You look not in the DNA for the mutation, but you look for the RNA, means which genes are active. And if you do this for the whole genome, means the transcriptional activity of the whole genome, then you can identify certain patterns which are different in patients who respond to immunotherapy and in patients who do not respond. So this is a second large strategy which helps to cover the complexity of the tumor microenvironment.